Most automotive sensors have a 5 volt reference and ground provided by the ECM. Then the sensor returns a signal to the ECM with the necessary information. If you're going to bench test the sensors, then you need to have a way to provide that 5 volt reference. That's what this box is capable of. It's a pretty tricky build, especially if you want the end result to be this compact. We're not going to do a step by step build of this project where I drill the holes and solder the connections. Our time will be best spent if I explain the choices that were made in the design of this. All at the same time giving you enough information that if you choose to build one you should be able to. And that includes a full schematic drawing that I made and I share with you in the link in the description below. We'll start with the choice of the RCA connectors here. Probably like you, I've got a lot of these RCA cables laying around. The three wire bonded type. That makes them a natural fit for um, automotive sensors. By cutting those cables in half, you already have one end that's already prepared to connect. And the other end can be spliced to whatever custom connector you choose. This one is the connector for a pressure sensor that's going to end up on the in-cylinder pressure transducer project that's coming up. Another common automotive connector is this one that I've ordered and it will be spliced to an RCA cable. Here's one that I made with three alligator clips and I can easily make as many of these cables as I choose. There's one thing about these RCA cables is that they carry a plus and a minus normally and they have very thin strands in the center and outside. I join them together. I make it a common conductor. Uh, these things are only meant to carry about 20 milliamps. This also means that the RCA connector at the box has to be bridged. This is 14 gauge solid copper wire. It's soldered at the center and at the outside and then it is cut off flush afterwards. The way the device is used is that the sensor is connected through the RCA connectors. You can power it on, nice LED light on that switch. There's a BNC connector for either a oscilloscope or for bench test, you can simply use a voltmeter with a BNC to banana plug connector. Let's have a look inside. Right off the cover, which comes off a little bit too easily. That's one of the things I don't like about these project boxes. Did I mention uh, this was compact? So that's a project box you start off with. Uh, a bag of five on eBay for five bucks. I do like these nine volt uh, battery holders. The nice LED lit switch that I just spoke about. Some uh, 24 gauge silicon wire is very handy on a project like this. Let's uh, zoom in a little bit here. A common way to obtain 5 volts is the use of an LM7800 series, like an LM7805 um, linear voltage regulator. They, they only cost about 25 cents a piece. Uh, they're not efficient. They generate a lot of heat. And I chose to stay away from it. I went instead with a, an MP1584 chip based board. It's a switching bulk converter. I have one here. It's a size of a thumbnail. It sits in here on a bed of double adhesive foam tape right on top of the contacts of that switch. The specs of that MP1584 chip has a wide range for input voltage, 7 to 28 volts, but with just a 9 volt battery I'd be flirting with the low end of that range. That is what led to the decision of two 9 volt batteries connected in series giving me an 18 volt input on that. There's a 5 volt output. I checked it at 9 volt input. It gives me 4.95 volts. 
I checked it at 18 volt input and it was also 4.95 volts. So you're 50 millivolts off target, not a big deal, and it's very consistent. What I also like is that there is no potential meter to adjust. It's just like it's in here and I can just forget about it. And these two batteries should last a long time before they deplete enough to get down at a, at a low input voltage here. I get a couple of years use, so I won't have to open up this box. Another important point on this build, to be able to squeeze in the room here, lengthwise, I couldn't mount this switch flush as it's supposed to. If, I, don't know if you can, I hope you can see this on the camera, but there is a rectangular portion just below this here. That's where I stopped. So I drilled and I filed a rectangular hole to accommodate that. That little bit of bringing this switch out gave me the room that I needed here. Another uh, useful fact is the battery holders are just narrow enough to allow room here at the top and all of the wires that need to go from here to here can go in that little track. Finally, there was some double adhesive tape that was put on the back of these battery holders to secure them to the bottom of the case. And that's about all there is to it. Put the cover on it. Project is done. It was actually a very uh, rewarding build. These guys take care.